My name is uh, Reinhard Knops. I'm a cardiologist and electrophysiologist uh, from the Amsterdam University Medical Center in the Netherlands. And uh, we're discussing today the results of the Praetorian trial, which is the first randomized trial uh, comparing SICD versus transvenous ICD. And it's an um, investigator initiated study with about 40 centers participating in this study uh, from the EU and the US. Well, Praetorian is needed because um, after the introduction of the subcutaneous ICD that was introdu introduced to overcome lead related issues with the transvenous ICD, um, it's, it's been used quite a lot, but in a specific patient, uh, patient population. So but sometimes it's called a niche population. So very young patients that need ICD therapy or patients that have a high infection risk uh, when they get a transvenous ICD. But we feel that over the whole, SICD might also be a appropriate therapy for all ICD recipients. So also the somewhat older patients with more comorbidities. And actually the SICD has not been tested in that population and certainly not in a randomized fashion. So to really investigate um, in what use, uh, what use uh, the SICD is in this uh, population, we felt that this trial was uh, definitely needed. So the study design um, is that it's a randomized study uh, based one-to-one -one in, uh, in fact, all comers for ICD therapy with the major exclusion criteria of uh, pacing uh, therapy, and pacing then means Brady therapy, CRT therapy, or anti pacing. So these patients were excluded, and also the patients were excluded that did not fi fit the morphology profile for an SICD, which is a bit specific, but um, in that patient cohort, we randomized 850 patients one-to-one -one in one of the both arms and followed them for four years for the primary uh, composite endpoint, which I also always like to call ICD trouble. And ICD trouble, uh, two major negative aspects of ICD therapy are inappropriate shocks and ICD related complications. So like lead fractures or repeated surgery for infections, etc. So we wanted to uh, investigate whether SICD therapy would be at least non-inferior to the transvenous ICD in regard to these two major negative aspects of ICD therapy. In this first presentation of the data, the follow-up duration was a median of four years. And we were very lucky to uh, get extra funding to follow the whole patient cohort for another four years. So that leads up to a total median follow-up of eight years to really investigate the chronic complications that we know of ICD therapy, and that is mostly lead fractures. So we're really uh, interested to see what the long-term follow-up will show, but the initial uh, indication is already that we'll see these curves of complications further divide uh, in, um, uh, with a benefit for the SICDR. Um, yes, the objectives were met, so we enrolled the desired uh, patient population. We were very lucky that uh, there was no pre-selection, so we really ended up with the patient population we were looking for. So the more general ICD population that most physicians are treating. All patients were randomized uh, according to, um, to the protocol and we reached our four year follow up. The only thing that, um, that made the trial quite a long effort, it took us 10 years to complete uh, enrollment and follow up, was that it's not an easy trial to enroll patients for. It's for patients quite difficult to have a randomized computer decide if they get an SICD or transvenous ICD. But we were very lucky that uh, all these centers participated and with 40 centers, we were able to achieve our, uh, our goal.
Well, I think that the, uh, the major conclusion uh, that we can draw from this data is that in the conventional ICD population, that on the short term, and, uh, and that means four year follow up, that SICD is just as good uh, with regard to negative uh, endpoints as the transvenous ICD, and that it certainly should be considered as an alternative uh, for the transvenous ICD, um, where up till now it has not been considered, it has only been considered in this uh, niche population. So the non inferiority of the SICD versus transvenous ICD is the major important message. And I think that we also have data, certainly the data uh, with regard to the complication endpoint that supports that probably in uh, the long-term follow-up, we will be able to show that SICD is certainly better with regard to complications.